Kara. I just love that portrait of that man up there. Can you tell me when you did that, a little about that process? Yes. That gentleman was a friend of mine and also a fellow artist who lived in Salida. His name is Cactus Jack. Oh. Um, when I first met him, he was building these beautiful crosses out of wood and found objects. And um, he also is a musician. And this day he brought this really what I thought was kind of horrible stuffed um, muskrat. It was about this big to the life drawing session. I didn't draw the muskrat because it sort of creeped me out. But um, what I wanted to get of him was, you know, the musician, the artist, the sort of visionary maybe. And so um, when he sat down and then he looked up, I don't know, I just knew that's what I wanted. And I really just... Did you, did you do that from the actual person sitting there or yes. from a photograph? That was a live session. It was about two and a half to three hours. It was pretty quick. I mean, I think, you know, if you really look at them, you can see the ones where I kind of ran out of time because parts of the drawing will be unfinished. You can see the bottom half of the drawing is sort of a question mark. I didn't get there. But, you know, I focus on the face because that's what interests me. and I. I like hands. You know, to me, a hand, the hands, that's where we do our work. So I like to, when it's possible, I like to include the hands in the portrait. Yeah, I think the, the clothes, the, the way that you caught the light and the folds of the clothing are just mm -hmm. incredible. It's beautiful. Thank you. He looks like he's about to start telling us a story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or sing us a song. <laughs> I think it's okay the way it is because when you look, uh, compare the top part to the bottom part, it looks more abstract. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit more natural. Yeah. Is this, what is this? Pastel? That's soft pastel. Beautiful. On a, the paper that I like to use with the pastel, it's almost like sandpaper. Really? It's very toothy. And so it really grabs hold of the pigment. And you can actually get a lot of color on that paper. It's kind of cool. As a viewer of art, I really like it when some paintings aren't finished, because then you allow me to finish it. I like that too. Yeah. I, I find that interesting. And I think that's something I like in art, is when the viewer becomes active. When you look at the piece and now you can start <coughs> finishing it or seeing things, right. that's really exciting. Can you, I was just wondering if you've ever had a school, because it seems to me like having a live session with someone would have a lot of potential. I was just wondering if you've ever had any really kind of funny or unexpected experience with doing that that you could recall. Mm -hmm. Nothing pops right off the top of your head. No, not that I can say here. <laughs> <laughs> How long does it usually take for a portrait? I'm, I'm probably different times, but... Well, the ones I do from life are typically three to three and a half hours. They're fast. Yeah, and if I don't finish, I have sometimes taken photographs and tried to finish with the photograph, but like I said, I get the photograph and I get my painting and I'm like, they're so different. Um, it, and that's why with Shant, I, I took so many photographs because I, I already knew that that had happened to me before where I had an unfinished painting and a photograph and they were like worlds apart. And so, you know, with Shant, since I had a whole bunch of photographs and an unfinished painting, it felt a little more not quite as scary. <laughs> like, you know, I look at it and think, oh my gosh, I didn't see this person at all. But it's just because I didn't see what the camera sees. You know, the camera, like I said, it's just that instant. I see three hours. That's a big time difference. Have you ever considered, you know, all, and the, all the personal art, ever doing a huge mass of people so you have a whole collective image? Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Not yet. 
<laughs> you know, like, almost like college kids graduating in one mass. Not yet. <laughs> Maybe someday. Hmm. This is a wonderful painting, just like you described at the end of 29 Palms, if you'd like to check it out. It's been there for years. I will. Your work is wonderful. And it is very individual. Well, a lot of the people that I painted, I painted more than once. And um, especially, I think, in particular, of this one woman that I painted quite often in Hawaii. She was a, an actress, and she had this red curly hair. She was lovely. But every time I painted her, she was a different person. Every single time. You know, she was an actress. She was like a chameleon. And I think that she would sit down, she was different that day. And it was like I never got bored painting her because she was such a chameleon, you know? She was so interesting. And she really, I think too, you know, because she was an actress, she really had a way of projecting something that became exciting to me. Where do you get your subjects? I wander around and ask people <laughs> and give them my card. Some of them are here. <laughs> So you, you actually spot people downtown and, and you, something grabs you and you really like to paint them? Yeah, I scare a lot of people away. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did that to a lady at the gas station and she was like, pew! <laughs> and I'm like, I'm serious, you don't have to take your clothes off. <laughs> From the time you started drawing, you started getting inspired to draw, how long how long did it take you before you started feeling comfortable with your art? I'm still waiting for that to happen. <laughs> um, but, you know, like I say, I think as you begin to show your work, and the more you show your work, that becomes an important part mm -hmm. of the process. You know, you, you do reach a point where you have all this work, and it needs to go out into the world. And that's a whole other leap that's made. And I think each time I show my work, it gets a little easier. Each time I develop a little more confidence. And it's a process. Well, I, I think that's what I meant. But what I was really getting, I guess maybe I said it the wrong way, is, is I know I've met some artists and they're never satisfied. They're, they're always looking for something better. But I mean, where you felt at least comfortable enough, like I said, to, to display it. Because I'm sure from the time you started drawing, to, you were willing to let other people really see it. It was that time, you know, where you just did not want to just see it. But now, even though you still feel there's, there's a way to go, but you feel comfortable, comfortable enough to let somebody else see your work. And, and you know, maybe even give you, you know, a better idea how to do it better. Or, or yeah, that's another thing, taking criticism. If somebody said, you know, if you did it this way, or something like shadow and light, and, and give you ideas for where you're saying, I'm willing to learn, because I want to really learn this, and really want to go into this. It's difficult for me to answer that, because I think what I will say is that every time I show my work, it's scary, even now. <laughs> and, and I do want, the feedback um, that's really important to me but I'm also kind of learning that maybe not all feedback is good feedback and some of it I need to just let it bounce off and then some of it I need to internalize and and it's really important to learn how to make those distinctions I think and it's something I'm still learning so I think you know um, the first show that I had that seemed like a big deal in public was a solo show in Denver. And um, I had my own gallery in Colorado at the time, but somehow showing in someone else's gallery in a, a city that I wasn't living in, that was really scary to me. And that was a big deal. It turned out really horribly, but oh well. <laughs> I survived. Have you ever considered drawing a person, an actor or an actress, or a dancer who was actually in motion, rather than you're taking a series of pictures at different points, but actually trying to draw them while they're in motion. I've tried that. Motion. I've tried that before. Does it work for you? No. No. <laughs> 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 
I, it's not that interesting to me. I, I guess I feel like that's what video is for. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think that I'm trying to learn, you know, what is it that's really important to me in my own work. And, and stay firm with that. And yes, take in the suggestions others have, but go, well, that's a nice idea, but it's not for me. And learn, kind of learn what my boundaries are, maybe. Of course, video was an advantage that artists 200 years ago didn't have. Well, photography also. And look at what photography has done to art, how it's changed it. I mean, even portraiture, what I'm interested in, a lot of the big portrait artists now take the photograph, project it on their canvas, trace the drawing, and then begin, begin painting so that they're not wasting time getting the drawing just right. And um, that doesn't interest me. Do you do that? No, to no. me, that's cheating. Well, I, whatever. I, to yeah. me, it's just like I worked really hard to learn how to draw. Yeah. I, I wanted to <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I, it's just not interesting to me. I, you know, a photograph is a work in and of itself. And to me, that's too much like me taking someone else's art and just duplicating it. I mean, it's already there. It's a work. It's a photograph. There it is. It's done. Or what's interesting about me painting that? I, that's boring. I, no thanks. <laughs> okay. John? Uh, without thinking, could you answer the question, if you had one painting to do, would it be an abstract or a portrait? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will I will say this, John. I will say this. I find that for me the figurative work is like the strand that all the pearls of my other art are hanging on. So the abstracts, the rabbits, the trees, the flowers, all of those things hang on what I consider the foundation or the strand, and that is the figurative work. The figurative work for me is kind of like a singer. You know how singers practice scales to warm up their voice and to get their voice fluid and beautiful? That's how I see the figurative work. It's really almost like an exercise, even though it's grown into more than that for me, ultimately I feel like it's something I continue to do to make my other work stronger. So your other work is the song? Yeah. It's the opera. <laughs> Which among that list is your favorite that you were speaking? I like them all for different reasons. I think you're asking a question that depends on the day. Yeah. Well, and sometimes even the hour. I'll get up and think, I'm going to paint a rabbit today. And I'll paint a rabbit and go, Okay, now I'm going to paint an abstract. So, have you ever did a painting of a person, and then after you finished, before you finished it, just the way they looked, the way they acted, you you instilled another portrait picture in there. An example like this person's look looking a certain way, and you were thinking, gee, he looks like he's really thinking. I wonder if I painted a dog looking at him. Watch me think. It would, that would enhance the picture. So in other words, the dog was never in the pose, but you, you, you painted one that, that would fit the person because, and then you had them looking at the person, the way the person's sitting and thinking the person originally draw. You originally posed for it, and you installed another picture. And you. Not, not with this work, no. I, I really feel like with this work, what I'm trying to do is tell the truth and only paint what I see. And you'll never be a politician then. No, I'm not, embe I'm not embellishing here. I'm, I'm trying really hard to be honest. I'm trying really hard to just be pure and true to what I see. I don't even usually change colors of clothes or anything. I, I'm really just trying to get what's there. That's all. That's all. The other work I do, the abstract work and the rabbits and the other things, that's where I embellish. And I think that's why I have to have both because this is the truth, and then I want to play. And the abstract work is like play. It's like for fun.